So what does it mean to throw your back out? Does it mean you actually throw your back out? No. We understand the mechanism more now than we have ever. And it relates to the, the stiffness at one segment and how the stiffness is different compared to the other levels. This is a model that I've created to demonstrate how the stiffness of this is less than these two. And you can see that as it bends, one segment bends more than the other. This is what happens when someone throws their back out. It's the most common mechanism. And when you go to bend in an awkward uh, angle, like if you're more of an a rounded and a twisted type of a, of a movement, these should all move in sequence. But if you have a disc that's lost a little bit of its height, just like a car tire, when a car tire loses its height or its pressure, it's a little sloppier on the road, right? So it's not as stiff. Very similar to a disc. So if you've got a little bit of a disc height issue, like this has lost some of its disc height, then when you go to bend, this will actually fold. It's called a buckling phenomenon. Uh, or a folding or a kink. And there are sensitive tissues at this interface. It could be the disc itself. This could be the end plate. It can even be the facet joints that actually bind and cause irritation. That's often that the reaction after you've thrown yourself, thrown your back out, the muscles usually go to protect. Well, it's because one of these tissues or maybe a combination of these tissues have been aggravated or sensitized. And it takes a little while to recover from that. It depends on, you know, how significant the, uh, the buckling, you know, moment is, it's called. So how do you prevent such an event? Um, you know, with degenerative discs, which is a very common thing that, that a lot of us have, you know, it starts as early as the second decade of life the disc heights come down and just like a car tire they're kind of a little they can kind of slide a little easier so you want to especially when you go to lift things and even common bending you want to maintain this curve in your back to make sure that these facet joints are engaged as soon as you go into a forward flexed type of a movement these facet joints disengage these guys actually stress shield the disc and it kind of locks things in place but as soon as you kind of go into a flexion state, this thing can be a little bit more slippery because you've got these two little, these door stoppers, and if they're not engaged as much, so there's a little bit more rotation. So you want to maintain this curve when you load and lift, right? So when you go to lift, stay square, brace from here down, try not to kind of bend and twist too much, and stay square to the object of the thing that you're trying to lift. This is even important to do when you're like loading the dishwasher, for example, or you go to flush the toilet, um, you're taking the garbage out. So try to use these principles to help prevent from your back from going out, throwing it out. <laughs>